the shooting range. In this episode, the dreadful, blood-chilling beast that is the new Abrams. How to warm your blood again and fight this demon anyway. Hotline, the developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with a spooky but instructive tale on the importance of listening to grown-ups. Once upon a time, at an army base, there lived an adorable little tank. He had a loving family. A father, tank, and a mother, self-propelled tank destroyer. Also, there was a grandpa, a big and grumpy machine, old tank. And when the time came for old tank to go to the eternal scrapyard, he gathered everyone around him and told them, when you march into battle, and a victory seems unattainable, do everything you can. Deploy smokes, spam radio commands, call in artillery strikes. Just don't summon the black helicopter. And as he said this, his lights went dark, and he was remelted. Everyone took his words very seriously. Everyone except Little Tank. Usually, he was well behaved, just like his parents taught him. He was kind, attentive, and never spun his stirret when dining at a gas station. He was a good boy, but only at home, where his parents could see him. Somewhere deep inside, Little Tank was a cocky, greedy, selfish brat who was ready to do anything to win. So, one time, Little Tank went into the fray, but as hard as he tried, he couldn't pry victory from his opponent's hands. He was so desperate that he abandoned caution and summoned the Black Helicopter amidst the chaos. The skies darkened and a black shadow appeared out of nowhere. With a thundering roar, it rained down its 80 GMs, vanquishing everyone but Little Tank. Overflowing with joy, Little Tank hurried home to tell Mom and Dad about his glorious exploits. But when he got there, his father, Tank, was nowhere to be found. Only Little Tank's mom, self-propelled Tank Destroyer, was there. Little Tank knew it wasn't just a coincidence, but kept it to himself. He got scared. Next day, Little Tank went to battle with other itty-bitty tanks again, and his enemies pulled no punches. Victory seemed out of reach, just as yesterday, and Little Tank couldn't help himself. He summoned the Black Helicopter for the second time, History repeated itself. The Black Shadow demolished everyone but him. The defeated tanks were towed back to the factory to change their ravaged tracks, engines, and crews. But Little Tank, with a creeping sense of guilt, motored back to the base. And he was right to feel guilty and afraid. His mom disappeared as if she had never even existed. The only thing left of her was a black, oily stain on the wall. Little Tank mourned and wept, but once again kept it to himself. That very same night, he heard the voice of Old Tank calling to him from this damned stain on the wall. Ride, my grandson! The black helicopter is coming for you! Terrified Little Tank hid behind a crate with spare parts. The voice called to him again. Hide, my grandson! The black helicopter has found your base. He's looking for your hangar now. 
Little Tank was scared witless. He darted to the darkest corner of the hangar, thinking that he was finally safe. But the voice screamed at him as loud as it possibly could. My grandson, the black helicopter is at your doorstep. It's looking through the windows, aiming its guns. Hide, hide, gosh darn you. Little Tank snuck from the hangar to find another hiding spot. But he was too late. Right above him hovered the black helicopter. Four ATGMs on each side. His headlights were red and scary, and they stared at Little Tank without blinking. Old Tank told you not to summon me, did he not? The black helicopter asked in a deep, ominous voice. Y yes, he did, Little Tank answered, breaking down in tears. You ignored his warning, and for that, I'm taking you with me, said the black helicopter. And since that night, no one has ever seen Little Tank again. He vanished, but from that moment, two black helicopters started prowling the skies. One big, and the other one just like the first one, but little. <laughs>「ドクター・ジャケット」。That's how the players tend to remember it. Is this real life? Or is this just fantasy? Well, no, it is real, for the most part. Is it terrifying? Without a question. The hull is as wide as heck, as is the turret. It's got a sharp, aggressive shape. And the sound of this gas turbine engine, you can't mistake it for anything else. Some folks panic the moment they hear it. And let us tell you, they have all the reasons to. This engine of 1,500 horsepower accelerates the Abrams up to 68 kph. By the way, it's 4 kph less than what this model's light version is capable of. That said, the increased weight doesn't significantly affect the overall mobility of the vehicle. You probably won't even notice the difference. We won't talk too much about the main weapon. It's the same old 105mm M68A1 cannon. Nothing new. What is new, however, is the armor. Visually, it looks like the old news. And the thickness of outer layers is the same as on the regular Abrams. But the turret shape has become a bit more elongated because the composition of combined armor has changed. Its NERA element is 200 millimeters thicker, adding up to a total of a whopping 800 millimeters. What does that bode for us? Well, The equivalent defense against the kinetic shells will increase by about 20 millimeters. Against the heats and the ATGMs, however, the regular Abrams could withstand anywhere from 660 millimeters and up to 1,000 millimeters of damage. But its newer brother, <laughs> um, from 1,000 millimeters up to 1,500 millimeters, your modus operandi is as simple as it gets. You'll be the first to move into any position. Consequently, you'll have the right of the first shot. After that, who knows? Maybe you'll knock your opponent out right away. Or maybe you'll just deal critical damage and knock him out five seconds later. By the way, in arcade battles, you can complete a full turret turn before your reload finishes. Remember, and take full advantage of this fact to leave your enemy no breathing room whatsoever. Are you spooked? Yeah, you don't say. But it's not all that grim and dark. The unbeatable Abrams is not that unbeatable at all. It's actually not that hard to destroy it. So let's learn 
How does one vanquish such a beast? As we've already established, this machine is very well protected against the ATGMs and heat shells. But the protection from simple armor-piercing shells is way, way worse. So, first of all, let's use these ones. Pretty much anyone can pierce the turret cheeks of this tank. For example, the Leopard 2A4, the T-80B, the AMX-40, and the Type 90 will simply ignore the fact that there is any armor at all. They can pierce it and deal serious damage from 1,000 meters away. If the shot is successful, it'll break the breech loader or even knock out some of the crew members. Also, the M1IP has some spots that can be pierced even by those who have a much, much lower BR. First of all, it's the turret ring. 50 millimeters? Please, even an SPAAG can get that, not to mention a tank. Shooting into this area, you'll at least break a couple of modules. And in better cases, you'll damage the crew or bust the engine, setting it on fire. The angles of the cheeks near the mantlet aren't also that protected. Here, the armor will cover for about 200 millimeters of piercing damage. Sure, it's more complicated, but not impossible. And the mantlet? Come on, it can't hold any shell on its BR, and some of the lower ones as well. Hitting this area will cause the same damage as with shooting in the turret ring, while adding to that the opportunity to hit the ammo load, yet another weak spot. Of course, the eternal classic here is the huge lower glacy plate. If you've got anything that can pierce more than 360 millimeters of armor, this is one of your main targets. And finally, a stray HE shell shot from the T-64 or the T-80 in the optics or the commander's cupola will send the Abrams back home. These shots don't very often allow survival. So, now we can agree, this tank does look scary and indestructible. But in fact, it isn't. But of course, we have to warn you, the Abrams is really good when it comes to holding a punch from an APFSDS in the side. You'll need three or four of these to actually pierce it. But if you want to kill it, and nobody guarantees you that the opponent won't fire back. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question comes from a user called Shepard F.R. Do you remember that there are French and Italian plane tech trees to complete? D-550 or RE-2005, anyone? Yes, we do remember about the French and Italian planes, and about those Italian ground forces as well, and about the World War mode. And about the naval forces for the rest of the nations. And about the new helicopters. And about the balance. Gaijin remembers. Then there is another question from Merlin. Please do more map reviews. Either. If we're not mistaken, that's the 14th map guide in two years. Plus, some of the maps from the latest updates got their own videos on our channel. So, yeah. We try to cover them as they come. Taboo writes a nice addition to our previous episode. There's a little sniper spot on the American desert, near the bottom left spawn. There's a big ramp up to the rocks at the border of the map. You can see your half of the map from Alpha to Charlie. Plus, nobody looks there. They will now, mate. Thanks for pointing it out. And the last one is a cry of terror from is who bj it simply says russian bias indeed it sounds scarier than that abrams engine a very 
Halloweenish comment. Well, that's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on the shooting range. Yeah. <laughs>